Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. So a common question that I get a lot is what is inflation and why does it matter? And with the budget announcement made a few weeks ago regarding the freezes of certain allowances that we all get every tax year and because of these freezes this will negatively impact us because of inflation. So I thought what better of an opportunity to explain what inflation is and how we can ensure how to not lose money against what is typically dubbed as a stealth tax. So without further ado, I'm Kozan from Financial Madness, helping you be better with your money. So before we get into it, I just want to say a quick apology for not being able to release a video last week. If you have been following my channel, you would have known that I had recently purchased a house and last week was my move-in date. So as you can imagine, things were pretty hectic. So yeah, I didn't really have time to make a video last week. Um, that's all set to change. I'm in my new place. I've got pretty much everything set up now. I am having a few issues with the audio, so I'm hoping this video doesn't come across a bit too echoey. But hey, we'll live and learn. Um, but yeah, let's get into the show. So what is inflation? Inflation is the steady increase in prices for goods and services over a course of time. And therefore this steady increase in prices devalues the money that you have in your pocket. So for example, let's say one day an apple costs 50p. You have 50p in your pocket. So amazing, you can buy an apple, yum, yum, yum. Unfortunately, over time, inflation causes the price of that apple to increase to 60p. That 50p that you have in your pocket Pocket means you cannot buy that apple. Hmm. It's actually worth knowing that the opposite of inflation is something called deflation. Now this happens when there is a steady decrease in the prices of goods and services over a course of time and therefore the purchasing power of the money in your pocket actually grows. So great, you probably are thinking that deflation is actually good for the economy. Wrong! Deflation is actually considered far worse for an economy compared to inflation as deflation is a lot more difficult to tackle. So let's just take an example to explain this a bit better. So let's say a PlayStation 5 costs today about £450, but because of deflation, the price of that PS4 becomes 425 then later on in the week it becomes 400 and then maybe in the future it might be 375 Now because of this steady decrease in prices, people are likely to hold on to their money more because they see the prices of goods and services decreasing over time. So the longer that you hold the money, the cheaper the PS5 or whatever will be in the future. This mentality then begins to stagnate an economy and it is likely that the economy will suffer from a decrease in growth or even negative growth. So why do we even have this thing called inflation? Now the amount of inflation is determined by a whole host of variables that I'm not going to get into today but they can be generalized into two categories. The first one being is demand pull inflation. Now this happens when there is an increase in supply of money. This drives demand to also increase because we have a lot more money available to us to start spending on various goods and services. But the supply of these goods and services isn't increasing at the same rate as demand. So we are faced with a situation called excess demand. So taking the example where a lot more people are buying apples because they have a lot more money available to them, but the apple factory isn't able to increase their supply of apples to meet the demand required from them. So this gap between supply and demand will see the price of apples eventually increase. Now the second type is something called cost push inflation. Now these see price increases due to companies seeing higher costs when it comes to production. So for example, sticking with the same apple factory situation, there is an announcement by the government that they will be increasing the national minimum wage therefore the Apple factory may be forced to make cutbacks because they are now faced with higher costs when it comes to paying their staff and these cutbacks will likely result in fewer apples being made in the economy and therefore less apples are available on the market and if demand stays the same so there's the same amount of people that still want apples the price of apples will increase to meet that excess demand for apples. 
By the way, if you are enjoying this video, please be sure to like, comment and subscribe with notification bell on. I release a video every single Monday talking about all things personal finance with the ultimate aim of helping you be better with your money. The two most common ways that the UK measure inflation is something called the RPI and the CPI. Now the RPI or the retail price index is typically higher than the CPI. The index itself is also a lot older with it first being introduced to the UK in 1947. Now this is generally considered a poor way of measuring inflation, however it is still vastly used today. But there was an announcement made by Rishi Sunak, our Chancellor of the Exchequer, in his November 2020 statement that there are plans to replace the RPI with a new measure of inflation called the CPIH. And now I think they need to find a new name for this because it actually means the Consumer Price Index including owner-occupier housing costs. Now this new measure of inflation is a long, long way away from actually being implemented. It is actually suggested that it is likely to be rolled out in 2030. So yeah, RPI is still vastly used to this day. I'll put a list here of some of the uses, uses, usages, usage, I can't say this word, the uses of RPI. And one of them mainly being that every year pensions are adjusted for inflation and this is based on what the RPI rate is. So the second form of measuring inflation is something called the CPI or the Consumer Price Index. Now this was introduced into the UK in 1997 in accordance to EU principles to create an international way of comparing price increases. So the way the CPI is calculated is based on a basket of shopping goods and services. So think of a basket and imagine the most common types of goods and services most people buy from bread to maybe petrol to hairdressers, um, trying to think of something else, a ready meals, a holiday to Spain. Now the prices of these goods and services within this basket will then be tracked and any price increases or differences will then be calculated for inflation. Now the Bank of England who are in charge of our money supply, and I've already demonstrated that a change in our money supply does have an impact with inflation, they actually have a target of what inflation needs to be month on month. And this is a target of 2%. Now if the target is missed by 1% or more, plus or minus from 2%, they actually have to write a letter to the government explaining what has happened. Losing money to inflation or not even beating inflation. Now these are phrases that I have used a number of times on my YouTube channel and you've probably heard them on other financial channels too. But what does it actually mean? Now I'm just gonna show here on the screen the average UK inflation rate within the last few years. Now this is going to be based on the consumer price index. So as you can see here, this has only got data from 2019 and uh, the UK average inflation rate was 1.74, 2018 it was 2.29, 2017 it was 2.56, uh, 2016 1.01 etc etc. So yeah I think you would agree that the average inflation rate here in the UK typically hovers between sort of the 1.5 region and 2% region. So that means that if your money isn't earning interest at the same rate of inflation at the minimum you will overall be losing money to inflation because the value of your money will have depreciated and you have less purchasing power than you did at the beginning of the year. So yeah, let's have a look at what the average saving rates were like in 2019. And they range from 0.6% all the way up to, I think the highest is 1.54, but that's a long-term fixed bond. But yeah, let's even take the highest rate here, which is 1.5 one, which in 2019, that means it didn't beat the inflation rates. So I would have lost money to inflation because the interest I earned in my savings account wasn't enough to beat the inflation rate. Now, this is a really important lesson when it comes to personal finance, because I don't think many people take into account what inflation does to their money over the course of time, because you don't get a form at the end of the tax year saying that you have lost X amount of money to inflation. It just happens because the prices of goods and services within the economy naturally go on an increase and that is why it has been dubbed as the stealth tax. If you are still having issues getting your head around this because I do understand it can be quite a difficult concept to envisage, the Bank of England actually have a really cool calculator where you can um, compare what the value of money was like in the past in today's money. So it's the year 2000 and £1,000 in 2000 
now costs you £1,721.35. If we change that to even £500, you can see that you would have lost around about £360 to inflation in the course of 20 years. So yeah, have a play with that calculator. It really kind of puts a light onto how much money is lost towards inflation. So to at least maintain the status quo of the value of your money, you need to be hitting the inflation rate when it comes to interest being earned on your account. Now I'm going to assume that if you are holding the majority of your money in a savings account, you have no chance whatsoever in ever doing this because here in the UK, we are currently experiencing all-time low interest rates and the interest rates that you can get from banks don't even come close to what the inflation rate typically is. This is why people who are keen to build out their wealth over the future need to be investing in the market because savings accounts really don't crack up to the job. So I know investing can be a scary concept for some people, but I would encourage you to check out my earlier videos where I guide you through how to invest with something called an index fund, which is a really great uh, financial product for beginners into investing. You can start off really, really cheap and as you gain more confidence, you can then put more and more money into it if you wish. And yeah, over the long term, investments typically see an average return rate of eight to 10%. If you wanna take a more reserve number or even 6%, from the stock market, this still massively beats any savings rates that you'll get from any bank account and it beats the inflation rate which is the most important aspect because your money isn't not only losing money to inflation but it's actually growing by more and compounded over a long amount of time will see your wealth grow substantially in the long term. Cool so I hope I've explained why inflation is so important to us when it comes to personal finance. It's something that we should all be wary of and I would encourage all of you if you haven't already begin to look at other ways of saving your money, even if it is within the stock market. Of course, if you do have any more questions, please let me know in the comment sections down below. I will, of course, answer them back to you. And of course, if you did find this episode really, really useful, I would appreciate if you smash that like button. That does wonders for the YouTube algorithm and the growth of my very, very small channel. And yeah, as always, I release a video every single Monday. So if you want to keep up to date with those, hit the subscribe button as well. See you later.